Mr. Chair, I motion we approve the agenda of our last meeting, December 1st, 2014. I want the approval of your agenda first. Can I have to make this? Yeah, I'm sorry. Approve the agenda. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll set that. It has a little bit of a second that we'll um, approve the agenda from today. On the favor, say aye. Aye. And also, the agenda has been approved. Now we're going to see approval of the minutes of these on the first. We're going to ask um, our secretary to read that because some people did not have that. They see a problem. They know what went on. Okay. okay. These are the minutes of the Joint Education Committee meeting held in the school board office on Monday, December 1st, 2014 at 4 p.m. The meeting was called to order by Mrs. Tanner, Joint Education Committee Chairperson for the school board. The role was taken by Chairman Shuttleworth and all committee members were present. Approval of minutes from September 22, 2014. Mr. Bullock made a motion to approve the minutes of the Smalley seconded motion and was approved with all members voting in the affirmative. Under information energy presentation, Mrs. Heather Cup presented a video that was shown at the BSBA conference in November. The video depicts the students from Parkview Middle School and Bluestone Middle School learning ways to become energy efficient and how to save money on energy utilization at home and at school. Johnson Controls work closely with the students in teaching them to do improvement audits. Energy performance contracting. Mr. Charlie Barksdale from the Virginia Department of Mines, Minerals, and Energy shared a PowerPoint presenting information regarding the back of the envelope process, explaining the process, comparing savings, next steps to be taken, and a listing of school divisions that have or are participating in the process at this time. Next step for NCPS is to set up a committee to go through each step of the process. Mr. Wayne Carter volunteered to be on the committee once it is set up. Recommendation was given by someone in that's been going through the process for the last 12 to 15 years. Mr. Barksdale's advice and services are free to NCPS as he works and is paid through the State Department. We are looking at going through this process to improve our elementary school facilities. We have selected six companies to perform the BOE audit. Siemens, Honeywell, Train, Johnson Controls, Tesco, Energy, and Amoresco. The next meeting was to be determined, and we adjourned with everybody voting in the affirmative. Thank you. Can I get a motion for acceptance? So, I'm going to do a second minute. It is moved and brought to second that we accept the minutes as read. All in favor of the motion? Aye. All opposed? Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Uh, the Secretary is, is checking the roll for us, okay, so she's not going to call the people names, okay? She's checking the roll for us. Let me tell me the people. We're going to move to the energy performance contract on our agenda. And I think someone from the school board will explain that to us again. Do you want to explain? Okay. So, as you know, we invited um, six companies to enter into the process of the back of the envelope. We had three companies uh, to respond to that, and um, we commit we created our com committee made up of Wayne Carter and Greg Gordon and Mr. Bullock and Dr. Thornton, myself, and Dr. Charles Lee. And, and Mr. Tucker, Robert Tucker. And um, we just had the three companies to present to us these past two days their proposals and their project and uh, building our uh, relationships with them and choosing a partner. The three companies were uh, Honeywell, Amerisco, and Johnson Controls. And so they brought their team in. And for the past two days, they gave us presentations. They had an hour and a half to give us their presentations. And we had their projects. We had reviewed their projects. And again, we were picking a partner, not necessarily a project. And so um, today, we uh, worked together on uh, making a decision afterwards. We discussed it, and we came to a vote on a partner that uh, we feel like we might go with. And so um, there's some more information that we want to get from uh, the companies, just a, a few more questions that we want to ask. And um, hopefully we'll have that answer uh, by Monday. Uh, we would love, well, actually we'll have it Friday, 
and um, you know be able to move forward with this and would like to ask that it be uh, added to the Board of Supervisors agenda uh, for us um, to approve the moving forward of the spending or the funds for um, this back of the envelope process. And really this, those funds at this point in time, because once we pick a company, you know, they have to come in and do an energy audit. They looked at just the four elementary schools. And what the committee agreed to was that we would look at all eight schools. Uh, while we might not be doing but the four elementary schools at this time, we would then have the information so that down the road we could do a second proposal if we wanted to or add on. Uh, also, the energy audit can be as little as no cost. Uh, if you do a project, there's usually no cost. Uh, but uh, what, don't go in and do a much more in-depth, and that'll take approximately six months. Uh, and we'll know how much those audits would cost if you didn't do the project by Friday, correct? Yes, yes. So that's the fund that we'd be expending now. And how it kind of works for you all, as Charlie said today, we look at that project, and let's say there's $1.2 million worth of construction. I mean, that's everything from changing lights, switches, uh, the full load air plugs, air conditions, air conditions, all kinds of things like that. Heating, uh, HVAC systems, um, and then you look at what those cost savings by using different fuel, electricity, and that is amortized basically over the lifespan, of usually a 15 year period, which is probably what we're going to look at instead of a, an 18, we we're looking at more of a 15 year, and that pays for it. Uh, you're guaranteed that when they do that audit, one of the things that Charlie does is he goes back and looks very heavily at what their figures are to make sure they're correct. If it comes in and it's less, the company has to eat that loss. If it comes in and it's greater, we get that profit for another project uh, or anything else. So we, we don't feel that it's a, a losing proposition at all. Uh, Charlie's time and his advice is all free. Uh, so all of us who are involved think that it's a very good project. Uh, one th some of the things that we discussed that wouldn't probably be a payback, for example, the elementary schools, been a lot of discussion about changing the windows out, things of that nature. Well, there's not that much energy savings on windows for the cost of it. So you could have to pay part of that. But again, part of that would be aesthetics. It would change the outlook, the look of a building by changing all those windows to a more modern style. Uh, one of the things is, uh, Ms. Tuck said is a lot of times with the Promethean boards, the windows all, all the blinds pull because of the glare coming in. So we look at those kind of issues with the windows trying to go back. And it might be something that we can do in a later project uh, or that we have to put some money in. Uh, it just kind of depends. But part of it, even if we had to put some money in, would be paid for through the grants and through the energy savings. So it wouldn't be a total loss there. Uh, but right now we're just looking at elementary schools, would y'all? To agree on, agree we're going to have the audit yeah. done on right. all of our facilities, right. including transportation, maintenance, central office, and our schools. So what that means, too, is as we look at all those other facilities to get the energy savings, they may find, like replace a boiler or do something or lighting in those facilities as well, but you can take the savings for that and apply it to additional things in the elementary school to add on. So. So as we're still waiting to decide what we do in the future, we're taking care of all buildings. And, and so it's a, a good bonus. I think the other thing that the whole committee was very supportive of, and, and Wayne pointed out in, in the meeting, is all of the, uh, no matter who we choose, all of them have the capability to come in and help train our staff in ongoing training. training. Not just, like if you do a regular project, here's the manuals, we're gonna train you, and then goodbye. And, but this is a 15-year partnership and marriage, so and they need the savings to be real for them, or they're going to be sending us a check. So they have an investment to come in monthly to make sure we're saving what we're supposed to be saving and, and train our staff to make sure they're utilizing the equipment. And the savings. So we, we felt like that was a huge thing to, to help our county staff get better and better, and they'll actually do the training for them. So wherever there's a weak area, 
We're going to, at the end of the day, we're going to have a better maintenance staff. It's a lot of preventive maintenance that will be included in that. And then all of them have programs, so it shows. Okay, it's been three months. Have you changed all the filters in the school? Have you done this? Have you done that? Because that's been a concern in the past. Uh, we put in plenty of well controls, and then they were taken out, things like that. Maintenance hasn't been done to stuff, so this actually puts the burden on both the school board and the company to make sure all of this is taken care of for the next 15 years. Do they constantly give you updates on the savings? I mean, yes, yeah, by law, once a year they have to show you, but in order for them to not have at the end of the year, you know, having to pay us back, that's where that monthly comes in that they um, can provide reports and, and those different things. And what's great is getting that free Charlie Barksdale, mm -hmm. the reports will be delivered to his office and he'll verify the savings. So we'll know if the savings are real or not. Yeah, so he would like the uh, presentation that Charlie gave. Right. And then with the check on list, not in a year, but along the way, and then quick payout, he thought it was um, that's good. Now, one of the things of this is you will be borrowing the money. Okay? I don't want anybody to think otherwise. All three companies, the way this works, as Charlie says, you're borrowing the money because it's a 15-year payback. So they're amortizing that, what, let's say, $1.2 million in investment to upgrade over that 15-year period. Uh, they get a, a, a fee every year for their services. And then that's included in that payback so that you'll show that 15 years what you can make it work out to be. Uh, so they have to be involved from now on, which is also going to help upgrade, keep the schools up, because a lot of things are from toilets, uh, light switches, uh, different types of lights. Uh, we'll have a lot of probably motion control sensors, things of that nature. Uh, low flow says that when computers aren't being used, they go off, copiers, everything else, uh, which that's the idea. You've got increasing fuel cost in electrical cost because that's going up every year. So many localities have done this and they are going back for a second now uh, because they got to that point where well, we couldn't do it before because this wasn't economically feasible. Now we can go back. And that's what this Dr. Thornton was saying that we can look at other schools and, and see what we can save on that. Some things are very fast paybacks, some things are you can't make a payback. When does you can't make payback? Because that's a 30 or 40 year item, just like you built. And we didn't select a project because that's not what this process was. This was about uh, a partnership. The project will come much later what, and it could change. And it could be that we saw a project or an idea from another company that we would rather do. And, and, and we can do that. And on the education standpoint, all the companies provide uh, education along the way to our students. They have educational programs that tie into what they're doing in our building and educate our students and the community on what we're doing and, and the payback uh, for our community and energy savings and the environment. So that's a, I think that's a great educational tool for our students and, and also for the community to see what we're collectively doing to make sure we're having a nice environment. Okay, I would like to thank, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I would like to thank the uh, Joint uh, Committee who worked on that uh, study, the Energy Contract Study for the four elementary schools, and we will put that on our agenda for the Board of Supervisors. Uh, if there are no additional comments or questions, any other comments or questions? And we'll also be looking at with these firms that will be trying to get grants. Mm -hmm. They'll find the proposals for us with regard to the lowest interest rates because the more, the lower the interest rate, that means the less payback, which means a bigger project. And that's how they're getting paid too. They're doing a project that normally they wouldn't normally be able to do. Uh, these have been done at schools, Department of Directions has done it, uh, military bases are doing it. Awesome. So, so therefore this is going on all over. <coughs> well, one of these companies that we choose doing that or will like Mr. Barfield? No, they'll do that. They'll come forward with the proposals as to where we can get the best rates. Now, they'll give us actually several different proposals from what they stated. There might be four different firms that are bidding on this loan 
and then it's up to the board because you all are borrowing the money over the 15 year period. So that's why we want to make sure everybody understands that it's not free. We actually have to borrow it actually the county borrows. And they also use uh, local vendors um, uh, uh, to do some of the work too. But I was really impressed with all three companies. And you can take, say for me, to like one company, then we can take other stuff in the other two companies and, and use it in our whole package. Discussion. The, the solid companies because we need to be up for the next 15 years. No. Well, all three of all these three have been doing solid. it for a long time. Charlie was very, yeah. he, he was very confident that all three, he worked with all three of them on numerous projects. Uh, all of them have uh, hundreds of millions of dollars in these projects across the state. Uh, so they're all looking still reliable projects. The board voted at our past meeting to come up and hire a consultant to look at have public hearings throughout the community to look and see what it was that the community truly wanted in a new facility. Whether that was building a consolidated high school, renovating existing high schools, or building new high schools and middle schools. Okay, so a combination thereof. Uh, we discussed uh, lo possible locations. For example, if a new facility was built at Park View, there's actually land beside Park View, about 50 acres that the county bought 10 years ago. Uh, and that, that you could build a new facility on that, keep some some other facilities. It was discussed, for example, like Bluestone, there are no water sewer facilities there, but that have to be relocated. Uh, the committee will have public hearings in each one of the nine districts uh, set up with combination with the board member and the school board member. Uh, we'll have a consultant come in, take those opinions of the people, and try to come up with also cost estimates uh, based upon existing data from the Board of Education from the state. Uh, as to those costs, we've already given some of those to the uh, board members there online at the Department of Education's website. It gives size of facilities, square footage, average cost per student, things of that nature, so that you can get, come up with some kind of idea uh, some of these you have to go into more depth because some of them have all new facilities, some of them are existing facilities where they go to the school lab and just turn down the other one. So those are available. Uh, each person in each district would be allowed to speak once. So you wouldn't have, if you lived in whatever district, that's the district you get to speak. You couldn't go, well, I'm going here, going here, going here. So everybody, no matter what, would only be able to allow to speak once at each one of them. Uh, we'll set those around and then once that consensus as to what the public's willing to pay for, because that's one of the things that the board is concerned about, is we have to have public buy-in to any new facility plans for them to support, because it's gonna be a combination of taxes, increased fees, everything else to pay for. It's just, so they want the public's opinion as to what they're willing to pay for, and, and those are the ideas we we'll back and forth. So we'll be coming out with that RFP for hopefully this morning for the uh, consult. Is there a timeline for uh, when you're gonna when you're gonna start these meetings? When you know, hire your consultant. Or? Consultant will go out with RFPs, and the consultant will probably be hired or interviewed the following month. 
<laughs> We're not imagining that the public hearing processes will take too long. Public trying to schedule, you know, one week, as many of three or four nights, another week, three or four, so we can have it done in about a month period. Uh, because when they're going to be here, they might as well just stay here uh, and, and do it day, day, day. So that's going to be a more trust with the board members and school board members to try to find a place that they feel is where their public would come to. And it's probably going to be in community centers or schools, whatever, Library. libraries, things of that nature. We'll just have to try to get a guess on how many people are there because some of the libraries will have a lot of room, others we didn't, so it's kind of. Imagine if consultant would be able to answer some questions, lay out a lot of information, so people would have some ideas before assignments that are not on this, but that's not possible. But those questions have already been answered. So we want to consult and be familiar with what's going on enough so that they can discourage a lot of uh, negative stuff. Because we really want to be positive. Uh, 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 speaking for me as superintendent, I, I think it's a solid one. Uh, I don't think it's a great step. And uh, I think it's been, been needed. We need to hear from the public what, the, what you say. We've heard everything. What are you willing to pay for? And, uh, yeah, we've heard everything from consolidated to no just renovate. Don't you know? You know we said not doing anything isn't an option. We need to find out what options, though, whether it's a combination of new facilities, and renovated facilities, what, plus what the uh, what we proposed back to the board is for funding for this to try to help. We're looking at trying to set aside a revenue stream so that. As we set that up as a separate account, separate from the current school facilities fund. So if we show a million dollars of revenue, then that's that million we have for that project. Plus, we can, each year that keeps growing. Plus, we have a million dollars of the debt service that we can pay for. Versus, everything goes into one fund now and comes back out, and it's hard to ever separate. And you're, then you're going, well, we've got this coming, that's coming. If we've got already set aside just for this new facility, then that's going to take care of it. Because one of the concerns, and this is some of what happened in Warren County, Virginia. They did a, a very similar thing when they were building their first new high school three years ago that they've had about 40 years. They did a similar type project uh, and set up the funding stream because as they said, we realized we couldn't pay for everything just on a tax increase. We've got to find a funding stream that's going to pay for this for the next 30 years. Uh, so we know we're not going to have anything from South Hill, that, that debt service is here for the next 15 years. So when you look at that, we've got to come up with our own debt stream to take care of this project because whatever that amount is, it's 50, 75 million. That's a huge amount of debt service just to pay with regards to a tax increase. So if we can find a funding stream to cut into that, then that lowers it greatly. Plus, then no one else can come up and go, well, it, it's very difficult on board because they've got to say no to people who want things because it's like, okay, this is what we've got to do if we're going to build a school. And this facility. Plus, as we stated, we have other needs if we're going to go back, let's say we're going to build a new junior high school, which you does. Yeah. Then you're still going to go back and renovate the existing high schools for the middle school if you're going to keep them back. Well, if you use all the two million that we have now for funding the one, then there's no money to build and fund the other. So we've got to try to keep the two million separated from all the future needs. It, it for maintenance and other projects. I think we've all agreed that we want to put money aside and then it, it can't be cut. And, and I think what we're trying to do is, I think most of our board, the majority, wants to move forward in some way. But we want to make sure that the public behind it, because I think mean, they want to have to pay for it. And, we, and if, we, if we do this thing right, we all may have to do some sacrifice and all the way. And we, we get the public behind us. I, I mean, I think we can do some big things. I really do. Um, I, you know, I, you know, I, I don't want to be one that sits here and thinks that, you know, and I don't want to go forward. And we, we, we need it. I mean, if we need something to go forward with. But I think we got to get the public to buy into it. And, and we, and I think we can do that. But I think it's going to take sacrifices from all of us to get there I mean, to do this. But you know, I, I'm excited. I mean, I really am. I, I want to move. And you're looking at also with the new hospital coming, they're going to bring doctors in and they're going to be looking at our schools, so it's important that we upgrade our schools. Well, we're hoping y'all can provide the doctors. <laughs> <laughs>
This was right up in They had built one in Florida. And then their similar population, while a small size locality, their similar population of a couple thousand up in the Shenandoah Valley. And they used, it was from future economic development projects, setting aside all those funds to, to build the facilities. I'm pleased at the communication because it, it hasn't been clear because his assumptions are along the way. You know, we're going to build new schools, so we haven't taken care of this, we haven't done that. And, and I think the steps we're taking now, like you said, with the funding stream, we're still going to have some money to do the capital needs that we have to do over the, the next few years, and, and we have to do those things. And, and I think this sends a very clear message that, you know, we're going to take care of the facilities we have, we're going to get the things we need for our students, and along the way, say for whatever that future is, what this kind of uh, will to pay for. Uh, well, the contract issue. I mean, it's all we do in the Absolutely. Yeah, yeah something like looking back, we should have started this four or five years ago. But since we're starting it now, then I'm excited about moving forward in this positive and this methodical way of doing business. That's what it takes. As we said, I think the, the two million, it's always been a concern, it's just never going to build if we keep using it. Well, this way, we, we told the committee it'll probably take three years, but you know if we have a plan that we can put that money aside, if you put that money, and each year you keep adding to it, then you've also got that that capital down payment, plus you've got that funding, plan. and and we need to have enough so that we can so that we're not taking everything up too much, or looking taxpayers with a a, a huge tax increase, because that's not going to be very palatable to. A uh, huge tax increase is just not going to fly with the public. And that, that's a tough situation to be in. If we can get some of this revenue stream and, and build it in and show that we are doing some other things other than just take it's 15 cent, 20 cent tax, something like that. I mean, we, when we throw that at that, I mean, it, 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 you got rid of it. That, that's a real negative hit right there. It's, it's a lot of retired people don't want to pay no tax. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just have one question. Um, in this process, can the public only give their opinion at these meetings, or will there be other venues or opportunities? Or anything? Will it only be these town meetings that opinions? That's what the discussion was. That it would be at the town meetings. I'm sure if there was any written comments, we take those. But you know, we just didn't. The idea was you'd have the same group coming and speaking at each one, whether it's four or against. Right. Okay, and you'd have the same ones at both places. I, I want to come to every place. Well, now you only get to speak once. Okay, that's it. But you know, and the second time it's going to be. Yeah, you spoke in District 1. I don't care that you own property in District 9. You can only do it at one time, so you're done. You, if you had additional comments, I'm sure we take those in, in writing, but that'd be about it. We just, I guess somebody couldn't come to right. that particular meeting that they vote in. Mm -hmm. or, well, you know. I, I don't think, you know, we're going to set up each one, but I'm not sure that if you are, let's say, you've already hit the one for District 1 and you can't be there, and it's a District 4, that they're going to say, well, no, you can't speak because of that. You just couldn't come to every one of these kids. So I think, you know, by having them on different nights, we understand people have schedules. So there's no way we're going to be able to do this and fit everybody's schedule. But the idea was, if you want, I think, the committee, I'm speaking for y'all, but y'all don't care where they speak as much as they come and speak, correct? Come and speak with this one. Yeah. Right. Uh-uh, wait. If they can't come that night, listen, they're particular, um, they're particular um, they can find email I just wanted to make sure that we yeah. make that clear to the public as well that and we're gonna you know, we want to hear your voice and yeah. you don't have to necessarily come on that night or, or whatever. And we're looking at exceptional too yeah. as well as, as social media too. And whoever we hire, we hope they're going to help us to do it right. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it, it's not going to be look Spain down here. It's going to be this guy's going to come in and, and hope to do a do the right way. What is that for the county? Yeah. So we can get a good feel. Okay, any other discussions? Any other questions? Well, our first, first step in the um, school plan that has been designed by the Board of Supervisors Education Committee was to um, have these 10 hall meetings in the 9th district. Hopefully that the supervisor 
I'm saying they will be there in their particular district. We're asking that the school board will send their representative also at the same time, or anybody else can come too, to expect their representative uh, on board. Um, and we are trying to get the feeling of the public, which way they want to go, okay? Not which way uh, the school board want to go, or the superintendent want to go, or the board of supervisors want to go. We want to know how the public feel about this, because they are the taxpayers. They are the ones who are going to pay for this. And we're going to end up paying a little bit too. But more of them than, than we are here. <laughs> okay. And the two options that we are going to be discussing will be the combination of new schools or renovation of schools. And um, at this point in time, we know that schools are, two of our schools are over 50 years old. We don't need to talk about no renovation at that particular point in time. We need to get some new schools. I'm not going into further detail, but how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> We don't need to put any money into a 55 year old school, 50, 55 year old school, any more money. Uh, I think it's going out a little higher to you. Um, we'll put this on the agenda for the Board of Supervisors. And um, I'm so happy that you all have the positive outlook on this. I think it's going to work. It, it, I think it's time that we as boards work together um, because the newspaper, you know, perhaps you know how we, what we carry on in our meetings. It's out there the public, so we got to be professional and, and we get a lot done. And uh, with, with the new house club coming here, there's going to be a lot of people coming in here. And, and I'm glad to see the boards are working together, man. Because it has a reflection on the whole community. Yeah. Are there any additional questions or suggestions to carry back to the board of supervisors? I just hope they'll support what we're trying to do from the day, the last couple of days on, um, with the performance. Not just like that. If, if we could continue uh, this process, not just this committee, I, I think it was very helpful today to have Wayne and Greg Gordon sit and, and understand what was going on too. And, uh, and I think we should, if we do send members to your meetings as well, so that we understand each other's concerns and, and what we have. The more we communicate and talk about uh, what's going on, I think it's going to help both of us. It's better to sit around the table and talk face to face than to talk in the newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Tell my face doing that. It's not good for for the board. Okay. Anything else? Uh, for either one of these, the energy performance contract or the school plan or anything else you want to bring before the committee at this time on education. No, I'm for adjourning. Second. Move to stop the second minute meeting will be adjourned until an assigned date. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all.